Today I want to show you how to identify what Edelbrock carburetor you have by part number and the date code that's on the front. And we're going to talk about how to rebuild one of these. Very simple, very easy, but there's a couple of tips and tricks that you need to know if you're operating these, especially on the street, which Edelbrock carburetors are made for. And if you're running ethanol-based gas, a couple of tips to help you keep the ethanol from destroying the carburetor. So let's jump right in. So let's first talk about this carburetor that I picked up. It was used. Uh, it's clearly been a part. It's missing some linkage. Um, it come, came with a couple of bags of stuff. One's an electric choke, which this carburetor was not an electric choke. Uh, the linkage was cut on it. Um, it's it's seen some, some rough days for sure. But one thing I want to show you with it is how to identify what this carburetor is and how old it is and we'll talk about why that's important here in just a quick second. So when you're looking at the front of the carburetor on the passenger side mounting pad there's two sets of numbers. The 1404 which I think a lot of us know is the part number of the carburetor. 1406 is a really popular one. Electric choke 600. This is a manual choke 500 CFM carburetor. That's what the part number tells us. The second set of numbers is a Julian date code. Now, Edelbrock has changed this a little bit. Uh, in 2007, I believe it was, the first digit of that is the year that it's made. And the last three digits are the day. So this one is telling us this was made, I know, because I bought it. Uh, and the guy, the gentleman that owned this carburetor had bought it quite a few years before that this is a 2008 carburetor. It was made on the 51st day of that year. That's important to know because the older these carburetors get, certainly the more troublesome they become with some of the ethanol and things that happen internally with it. And we'll talk about that again here in just a minute. But I wanted to really quickly show you how you can identify what the part number is, what size it is, and then when it was made. Something else very important when you're looking at the front of the carburetor here in the center pad, if Edelbrock has stamped a 0101 in there, it means this carb was remanufactured. It's a reman carburetor. Now, it's probably not that big of a deal, but if you don't want to buy a reman carburetor or if you're concerned that it's been remanufactured, that's where you'll find the marking on it. It's the only place Edelbrock marks the reman, so you can probably negotiate a cheaper price if you're buying a used one if this was a remand piece. So back in the ultimate tuning guide I did, we talked about the few things that you're going to need to make this work properly. Fuel filters is a big one. Now Edelbrock offers quite a few different types of fuel filters. These are really simple uh, screw together filters, but what I really like is Aeromotive's fuel filters. I think they filter a lot better. They're certainly a lot nicer. They have AN style fittings uh, or ORB style fittings you can use on either end. Um, lots of different sizes. We They have the right micron, 110 micron. I, I'm just a fan of Aeromotive, so this is what I use on all my builds. Now these are the Edelbrock style fuel filters. They just came out with this line. They're a nice little billet piece. Uh, screw together. They have a replacement filter element on the inside, a bronze style. So uh, after you get a little bit of mileage, mileage on them, you can uh, pitch them, drop a new insert in, and you're ready to go down the street. Um, for a street guy, street carburetor, lower horsepower, under you know 400 horsepower, somewhere in there, these are probably just fine and it'll work uh, well for what you're using them for. Edelbrock also offers plenty of different types of insulator plates or spacer plates. It'll help you keep the heat from crossing from the manifold up into the carburetor. Just make sure when you order this that you order the right spacer plate uh, to fit the carburetor in the intake. Uh, this is also their uh, Edelbrock's uh, pressure regulator. Fairly inexpensive. I think it's like 85 or 90 bucks. I'll leave a link to it down below. Um, set for, I believe the range on this is like four and a half to nine PSI. So it'll certainly work with your Edelbrock carburetor and probably most other, uh, street carburetors out there. 
Uh, it's got a single inlet um, and then a dual outlet. I believe if you want to deadhead it or run a return line, you can certainly do that with it as well. But uh, nice and expensive piece. Um, they also certainly have everything else you'll need. They've got, uh, you know, fuel lines and carburetor studs and uh, pretty much everything you need. So uh, as you're looking to put together a kit, um, Edelbrock can be kind of your one-stop shop. Now I'll show you the Edelbrock Rebuild Kit. This is a part number 1477. It covers all the Performer Series carburetors. If you buy this at a local auto parts store or even if you order it mail order, here's a couple of things you need to do really quick. When you open up the package, make sure that it is in a sealed package. Edelbrock seals these up. If it's broken, the seal's broken or open. This plastic is uh, cut open like I've done. Send it right back immediately or tell the parts guy you don't want it. Find you another one. If somebody's opened this up, chances are they've just stolen the parts out of it they need and thrown it right back on the shelf. Make sure you get a sealed one. If you do open this up and you are notice that you are missing parts, and certainly if you have time, just call Edelbrock's tech line. I've done it a dozen times in the past. Tell me what you need. If you need a, a metering gasket or if you need the, the, the top plate gasket, they will send it out to you, no charge. Send it right to you, mail it to you. If you need the jets or, excuse me, the needle valve and seats, I've done it plenty of times. If you need anything, call them. If you're missing anything out of the kit, just give them a call. They'll take good care of you. Um, inside the kit, there's all the gaskets you need, a uh, full set of instructions, kind of. This is a very simple kit to put together, which we'll take a look at here in just a moment. Uh, but certainly it'll show you some adjustments, all the pieces, parts, give you a nice exploded view of it. Uh, everything you need uh, to do this is in this kit. So just kind of open it up, get a good inventory of it, um, make sure everything's in it, gaskets and all that, and that's all you need. Now just a couple of things that you're going to need to do this. This carburetor is fairly clean, so all I'm going to use is just a can of carburetor cleaner. You can spend the 50 bucks on the Berryman's uh, dip tank type stuff, but if you got something that's really nasty and needs to soak for a little while, great, use it. But it's kind of caustic. You don't really need it uh, on something this clean. Uh, just a good roll of paper towels, something to lay everything out on. Uh, I use also a terry cloth towel to wipe everything off. Uh, keep uh, lint free uh, type of thing but uh, also to a couple of things with the carburetor these are coated it's a pot metal material but they are coated so really all you need to clean this up with is a uh, nice um, old toothbrush um, and a uh, you know a very soft bristle brush you don't really need anything more than that you can use a uh, um, you know, a, a very soft metal type brush, but it's really not necessary. If there's not a lot of material or not a lot of buildup or garbage in this carburetor, which this one isn't, you don't really need anything. The brass style brush is okay. I wouldn't use anything harder than that. Uh, you don't want to remove any material off the top of this uh, coated material that's uh, uh, these pot metal carburetors. Doesn't matter what brand it is. Uh, just a nice soft bristle toothbrush to break up everything from the carb cleaner. Uh, that's really all you need. One thing that, that gets overlooked, and, and certainly if you use a carburetor cleaner in a can, you definitely need to use safety glasses. And I know it's kind of cliche and everybody talks about it, but certainly when you are blasting these little crevices and everything with a carburetor cleaner in a can, for sure, go ahead and use safety glasses. Your eyes will thank you. You don't have to worry about anything getting up in there. And, and certainly, it's just a cheap insurance for your eyes. So don't monkey around with it. Just throw on a good pair of, of, of um, safety glasses and, and call it good. One little tip here is when you're disassembling the carburetor, kind of look at it as two halves, left half and right half. So when you're taking everything apart on the left-hand side of the carburetor, kind of lay everything out on a paper towel to the left. Everything that comes off on the right-hand side of the carburetor, put it off onto the right. That way you don't mix up the boosters and everything else when you're kind of putting it back together. Just a little tip to make things a lot easier when you're cleaning and putting it back together. 
Also with the black brass floats, you don't need to soak these in carburetor cleaner. If you want, take them out, soak them in gasoline just to make sure there's no holes in it, but they don't need to go into the carburetor cleaner. So once you've gotten all the screws out of the top, then you just need to make sure that the linkages are, are disconnected. This one had been taken apart before, so I think as I flip this up, I'm going to see that there's probably no floats in it. And yeah, they didn't do it. So when you rotate it up like that, it kind of he helps keep the floats in there, uh, keeps the pins in so it doesn't fall out, keeps the needle and seats all together. Uh, no big deal if you don't do it when you're taking it apart, but just kind of know how it comes apart, I guess. Um, everything else up here is going to stay uh, assembled. You'll take the needle and seats out, um, but the uh, plunger and everything else is going to kind of get a little bit changed up. Uh, gasket, go ahead and save that just to make sure that uh, you know the new one's the right one. I think they pretty much all are, so uh, should be no problem. What you're looking for when you inspect inside of this, and this one is a very clean carburetor, is to see if there's any buildup from the ethanol deteriorating the pot metal in there. This one looks pretty good, still shiny, still has that coating that they put on there to keep the pot metal protected from the fuel, and now especially the ethanol. Uh, so this one looks really good. It's very rebuildable. Uh, I, I kind of had a feeling that it was, so... Um, should be no problem with it, but, uh, yeah, you're definitely want to inspect, make sure that there's no, you know, build up corrosion and you'll see it right away. Uh, I'll include a couple of pictures here of what a carburetor looks like on the inside that has that nasty, disgusting, uh, deterioration. And it's pretty, pretty much shot at that point when they get to that point. So you just really can't use them anymore. This one looks really good, clean and serviceable. Should be no problem to uh, get it cleaned up and rebuilt. And the next thing you can do is take the boosters out. Now, when I take these out, uh, I try to keep this on like a paper towel like this is. And wherever the boosters come out, whatever side they come out of, that's what I try to put them on that side of the paper towel so I know which side of the carburetor they came out of. Now, it's not going to really matter too much because they really only go in one way. Uh, the, the top hat of the carburetor will only go on one way because there's... Uh, those little vent tubes are, are drilled into the, the hat, so you really can't screw it up. But, you know, if you force it, uh, you could bend those and, uh, you know, you're not going to get the right airflow to it and the right pressure through it. So um, always try to keep these uh, boosters when you take them out on one side of the, the mat, like we talked about earlier, separating the carburetor. A uh, little gasket underneath there, you can just gently pry it up, pop it out of there. I typically save these just to make sure that, uh, you know, the new ones uh, that are in the kit fit right, but typically they're uh, they're no problem. They fit just fine. So anyway, uh, pop all the boosters out next. One thing's for certain, this carburetor has been apart before, so certainly a good idea to do a little bit of inspection, you know, with the floats being out of it, with the rods being out of it. Um, and this is a good example right here. That pickup tube is just a little bit bent, so I need, need to straighten that out a little bit. Um, another thing here, too, is... Uh, on this front little booster here uh, where the accelerator pump pushes the fuel out of um, underneath this, there is a little check ball uh, to keep the fuel from uh, backflowing into the carburetor when the uh, pump is not pushed down. So just make sure that you're a little careful with that. Uh, you get a new one in the kit. Um, so you're going to be replacing it, but just make sure you remember where it goes and um, uh, it comes out of there when you uh, do your cleaning and inspection here. Another little detail is here, when you look under these primary boosters, you can see that the jet or the tube nozzle coming out of there is at an angle, and that angle is to uh, inject the fuel down into the center of the uh, venturi that goes through the carburetor. So it's kind of a little telltale sign, uh, just kind of another way of telling uh, which venturi, or excuse me, which booster goes on which side of the carburetor because they are pointed down into the venturi. So those will become evident when you pop them out of there and you take a quick peek at them of where they go. Next, you can pull the idle adjustment screws out. Um, we'll talk about these a little bit more in detail, but really when you pull them out of there, the only thing you want to do is make sure that they're not notched at the very pointed end of it. Um, it just means somebody tightened it down too much 
uh, and got too aggressive with it. They're just supposed to be lightly seated within there and then backed off. We'll talk about that here in just a quick minute, but uh, uh, just do a quick inspection of it. Uh, the other thing is the Jets. Now, the Jets, again, just like uh, the boosters, when you take these out of here, um, put them in the same order they go into the carburetor. So if uh, you're taking out the left front jet, put it on the left front uh, of the, your paper towel or whatever mat you're working on, it'll just help you make sure that you get them all back in there correctly. Uh, we'll talk about how those go back in in just a quick minute as well, but uh, just another way to kind of keep everything organized. And you can just pop out these little uh, uh, tin gates that are in there. It's just made to uh, keep fuel from uh, sloshing around in there and uh, holding it primarily where the uh, float is so it can accurately uh, um, raise and, and lower the float to the level it needs to be at. So those can pop out of there as well. Next, you can pop out this little body that holds the needle that controls the fuel level going into the carburetor. Um, we're going to ditch these here in just a minute, but... Uh, underneath here there's a little screen uh, those are also new in the kit as well and those will go into the new needle valve and seat that comes with it next you can pop out this little rubber ring uh, that's the accelerator pump you can just rotate that right off of there uh, the accelerator pump assembly you can leave all that together unless the spring's damaged uh, just save you some time you don't need to take it apart if you don't need to and once you get it all disassembled, you can go ahead and start the cleaning process. Um, very simple, just, you know, the, a soft uh, bristle brush, uh, a little bit of carburetor cleaner, a little bit of scrubbing. I uh, usually use the soft uh, terry cloth towel here. Uh, it's non-lint. Uh, that way it'll, uh, um, you know, you can kind of wipe off any excess dirt or grunge or whatever and, you know, kind of do your final inspection on it. Uh, the rods and the, the plungers for the... Uh, um, the rods and jets, I usually don't take those apart unless they need to, um, not really, uh, necessary, but, uh, you're just cleaning up, uh, all the rest of the little bits and pieces here, getting all the big dirt off of it. Uh, and like I said, it's just one final inspection before it all goes back together. So I'll save you all the gory details of the cleanup. Uh, don't need to see it. We'll fast forward through all this, but, uh, uh, for the most part, you're just uh, kind of getting all clean and uh, uh, laid out and ready to go back together here in just a quick minute. And this is where it becomes important to have those safety glasses on because we're going to use that carb cleaner and the pressure that it's under to blast through all the orifices and the jets and the pickup tubes and the, all the little crevices on the inside of that carburetor. Uh, just help clean out the, the varnish and the garbage and junk and dirt and anything that's in there. So we're also going to hit it with a little bit of compressed air when it's done to blow out all the excess carb cleaner and loosen up anything else and get rid of everything anything else out of there but uh, uh, certainly this is very important that you keep your uh, keep your eyes protected and uh, make sure that all that carb cleaner doesn't get back up into your face but uh, uh, really this is just kind of the final little step in it and uh, uh, just certainly want to make sure that you blow through everything because uh, this is certainly where the details of this cleanup is really going to make a big difference uh, in how the fuel flows in the carburetor so uh, certainly take your time here and do it right. And this is certainly a good time to talk about a product that I've used for quite a number of years. Um, if you go to a good guys event or uh, some of the NHRA races where there's an Edelbrock event trailer, they will talk about this product as one of the very premium things that you can do to help protect the internals of your fuel system and especially the carb uh, itself. Uh, this product is made by Driven Racing Oil. It's called Carb Defender. And what it does is it helps isolate uh, some of the garbage that uh, ethanol brings and um, into the fuel system and, and helps push the water and everything else through it and protect the, uh, the carburetor itself from the deterioration and the caustic nature of ethanol. So uh, they've got the Carb Defender. They've got the Carb Defender in a race concentrate, so you can use it in uh, you know multiple gallons. Uh, and they've got a storage defender, which is a long term, you know, over the winter type of thing. But typically the way you can look at this is every time you fill up a 20 gallon tank of fuel, uh, one can of the, the driven carb defender goes in there. I'm a firm believer in this product. I've used it for a lot of years uh, and it does very, very good at helping keep that ethanol at bay and uh, keeping your investment protected from uh, the nastiness of ethanol fuel. So certainly pick up a bottle of the stuff and uh, use it with every tank fill. And once you get it all cleaned up, I lay it out on a couple of paper towels, kind of in the order and the section or the half of the carburetor that it goes all together. 
to make everything go back together a little bit easier. Now, the instructions, you can kind of take a look at it and reference these, but to be very honest with you, there's not much in it. Uh, if you just took this carburetor apart, there's really not that many pieces that kind of go together. So you can reference back to this. You can reference back to it on uh, the linkage and how the floats are set up and all that. But I'll show you that here in just a quick minute. But uh, for the most part, you know, you can fold these instructions back up. You're probably not going to need them again. And as I start to assemble this thing, I'll usually just take a quick peek at the gaskets and, and the needle and seats and just kind of remember where it all goes. Um, if you look at the, the old gaskets that came out of there, um, they're really not that, uh, that complicated. They're pretty easy. You'll, you'll, there's only one, uh, you know, squirter, um, the, the boosters for the primary and secondaries are different. So you'll be able to figure that out fairly quickly. One thing on the gaskets though is multiple of these, the fronts and the rears, uh, boosters, they'll go on multiple different ways. But, um, if you just look at the gasket on the booster, you'll be able to tell if you've got it on there correctly because typically there'll be something that doesn't line up even though it physically will slide down over the uh, uh, the pickup tube that's on it. So uh, if the bolt holes don't line up, if uh, you know the, the, the tubes aren't in there uh, correctly, you'll know it fairly quickly. So anyway, just take your time and uh, um, this will go together fairly easily. And you can put the jets in next. If you put them right on the paper towel, um, you'll get uh, you'll get them in the right corners where they go without having to try to read the tiny text on it. These jets are are stepped at the bottom, so you don't have to be perfect in it. All you got to do is kind of drop them in there and uh, make sure they're right side up, and they'll kind of seat themselves in there so you can screw them down and uh, tighten them down. Just not doesn't have to be really tight, just uh, snug, and uh, they, they'll they'll stay in there just fine. This weighted valve on the secondaries is the same way. Everything just kind of goes in one way on this carburetor. So if you get this wrong and get it in there swapped around, just swap it the other way and uh, it'll drop right in there. Once you get that weighted valve in there, you can uh, drop the secondary boosters in. Same thing, just make sure the gaskets are on there correctly. Uh, they don't have to be overly tight. Just uh, snug them down just a little bit, uh, um, you know, past their, when they're seated, just a little snug past that, and uh, it'll be just fine for these. These old jet housings are the same way. Just turn it till they seat, and then just a little snug past that. That's all you need to do with these. Next thing I want to show you is uh, how to assemble the float assembly. Um, again, not complicated, really only goes one way. If you screw it up, you'll kind of figure it out right away. But the little tang on the float goes down. It's kind of a limiting stop on it, uh, so it only can only go so far down. But uh, um, once you get these uh, both assembled on there, um, we'll take a look at how to adjust it. But before you put the floats on there, make sure you put the the gasket on there because uh, it'll need to go in between um, the top plate and the main body, uh, but it has to go on before you put the floats on. So do that first. So next thing you're going to want to do is adjust the floats. Now, I talked about this in the tuning video, and I'm going to do it here. Edelbrock tells you to use a 7 16 drill bit to kind of roll it under like I'm doing here. And as soon as the float starts to move up, you know it's kind of adjusted where you need it to. I'm using a half inch drill bit because I want the float level to be lower, not higher. And what that will do is it'll have less fuel in the fuel bowl. Therefore, less fuel means less chance for it to boil over, uh, less... Uh, uh, you know, fuel that'll spill over into the, into the, you know, intake and flood the vehicle, whatever. So uh, I always adjust these a little bit low, especially if it's going to be driven uh, and used pump gas that has ethanol fuel in it. So just to adjust this, like I said, you roll the, the uh, drill bed underneath there. And then as soon as that uh, float starts to move up uh, at the very tip of it, that's where you want to be. Now you want it about halfway under the bit um, and before it starts to roll up, if it doesn't, or if it's too low or too high, then all you got to do is pull the pin out and bend the lever on the float right at the body. So you don't want to bend it anywhere else. You want to bend the entire arm that sticks off that float body 
uh, that's the point you want to do it. You want to do it at where it's brazed onto the uh, the float itself. So it may take you five or six times of doing it, but eventually you'll kind of get it right. You'll roll it underneath there. It'll be perfect. This is set up perfectly half inch. So your lower fuel level, best way to do it. One of the easiest tuning tips uh, you can do with an Edelbrock carburetor or any carburetor, lower the float level. Now, once you have the floats adjusted, like I said, we're going to kind of roll the top on there. So you'll start at the back and just roll it. And what you do by doing this is one, make sure that the floats don't fall out of there. Those pins aren't in there, you know, super tight. They're just kind of sticking in there. Um, so rolling it in there and dropping it down gently onto it. So the uh, boosters uh, meet up with the top uh, plate of the carburetor, then you're all set. Then it's just simple as you know, throwing all the top plate screws in, uh, be careful or be uh, remembering of uh, the little uh, bracket on this one for the uh, choke cable. Uh, and then uh, we'll hook up all the uh, levers for uh, the uh, uh, the choke uh, and uh, the accelerator pump and, uh, and we'll be pretty close to done. And just like anything else on this carburetor, it doesn't be need, need to be really super tight. So uh, just kind of snug them, snug them down till they're seated and a and little bit past, and that's all you need. Uh, the, the rods and the plunger here, uh, don't forget to put the little spring in there, whichever step-up spring you're using. And you'll have to kind of jiggle them a little bit, and then eventually the, the rod will drop down into it and... Uh, uh, it'll seat down in there. Don't force it because you don't want to bend the rod. Uh, you're just looking to to uh, let it find its home in the jet. And, uh, you know, then you can uh, put the little top plate and screw on there. Um, the little retainer clips, if the ones that are on there are good, fine. You don't need them. Um, just you just like say you can they can be spares or whatever uh if, if you didn't need to replace them don't worry about it um and then like i said you just put the little little plate back here on the top and uh you can uh, button down the metering rods and that's really it once you get all the rods uh hooked up on the side with the choke uh the accelerator pump uh, you can do a small adjustment on the idle mixture screws on the front. They can be seated and then turned about a turn and a half out. That'll get you close enough. You'll be good to go. Um, I've wanted to do this video for quite a while. Um, the Edelbrock carburetor is very, very simple, very easy to adjust. It's not complicated at all. If you follow the tuning guide that I had uh, that I put out a few months ago, very, very simple carburetor. There's a lot of people that are, are stuck on one brand and they say the Edelbrock's junk and it's terrible. Well, I would almost venture to guess that they can't tune their own carburetor. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. These are great street carburetors. They can perform really well. When you tune them properly and your ignition system's good to go, these things are very, very good running, very, very dependable. Don't tend to leak all over the place because there's no gaskets below the fuel line. Very, very simple and they just stay adjusted and they're ready to go. So if you have any questions at all about this, don't hesitate. Leave them down below. I'd love to answer them for you. And uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please do. And uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks. I appreciate you all watching.